Welcome to Sarasota Investigators. So glad you're here to join us today. Today's our first backyard adventure in our series, and we're gonna be talking about insects. Well, I love insects, and I hope you do too. If not, I sure hope you love them by the end of the program. So let's get started. So the world of bugs is a pretty incredible place. Insects can be found everywhere, okay, except for outer space. They live in the water, they live on the ground, they live underground, they live on plants as well as inside plants. They also live on animals, right? And they also live inside animals. Insects can be found on every continent, including Antarctica. Yep, I said it, including Antarctica. But I must admit, there's only one insect on, in Antarctica, and it's this tiny little midge. Kind of looks like a mosquito, but it doesn't bite. Guess what it eats? Well, it eats algae, but it also eats penguin poop. Yep, I said it, penguin poop. Scientists have discovered over one million, one million species of insects in the world. And when you think of the actual number of insects, well, they make up more than half of the living organisms on the planet. So in the United States, right? United States, we have over 91,000 species. Here in Florida, we have over 13,000 insect species. Florida has more insects than all the other 49 states. Can you think why that might be? Actually, if you, if you have an idea, go ahead and put it in the chat box. Um, oh, can I remember? Um, so, oh man, what am I doing? I'm going all crazy on you guys. Well, here's the thing. Florida has an environment that is perfect for insects. Florida has, we have a lot of warm days throughout the year, right? And a lot of rain. So we also have very few freezes, times when it gets really cold or below freezing, but we also have high humidity. So the last thing we have is a very diverse selection of plants, right? So we have lots and lots of different types of plants. Um, so there's a lot of places for them to feed and to hide. All together, this means that it's a great place to be a bug. So can you think of some of the common insects in Florida? Well, almost everywhere you look, you, right? well, everywhere you look, you're going to see the number one insect in Florida. And as far as the number of individuals, it might actually be the number one insect in the world. You know what that is? Why don't you put it in the chat box? I'll let you, I'll give you 10, 9, mm. 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, well, it is the ant. So ants are one of the most amazing insects in the world. So a little bit about ants. We're going to just talk about ants for a second. One of the amazing things about ants is they are a social insects, which means that they have many, many, many generations that live and work together um, in the same colony. So as they have a job, either as a hunter, a soldier, they're nannies, they're housekeepers, and they're also foragers, right? They go out and they look for food. So all ants have a job. That's what makes them a social colony. And did you know that all ants that you see are actually females? Yep, that's right. The only males in the colony don't do any work at all. They don't even feed themselves. <laughs> the other in, the other ants. What? Why won't they even feed themselves? That is the that is the baddest thing that. I've <laughs> but they have a really important job. Their one purpose is to make sure that the queen ant, or sometimes there's multiple queens, right? They make sure that she can produce enough offspring, right? Enough eggs that they can keep that colony going. Right. Wait, so the males still have a job. They're looking after the yeah, they job. They're awesome. looking after the well, no, they don't do any they don't look after her. They just make sure they look after the offspring. So, so that's kind of like a job that the males do. do. <laughs> so did you know that ants are so strong that they can lift over ten times their body weight? That would be like me and you picking up a car and pulling it over our heads. So Pretty impressive. So the largest ant colony ever discovered was in Argentina and it had billions and billions of workers and the colony itself was over 3,700 miles long or wide. 
How far is 3,000 miles? Do you know how long it is between here and California? It's about 3,000 miles. So that's how big that ant colony was. So these are known as super colonies and those don't happen very often. They're actually giant super colonies. Um, but yet ants are amazing insects and you'll learn more about ants from Agent Sarah a little bit later in the workshop. So as you can tell, I really love ants. Other really common insects here in Florida are cockroaches and termites and flies and mosquitoes. I actually just did a presentation on mosquitoes. Spiders are as common as well and a really, really important arthropod, um, but they're not an insect. We can talk about that in another outdoor adventure. So you have to come back. So to move on here, let's see. So we're gonna talk about these insects. Almost every insect serves a purpose. Many of them are considered beneficial insects, meaning that they off offer us some sort of a benefit or help and our very few are actually what we call bad bugs, right? These insects in our backyard are mostly beneficial and we can actually separate these insects into different buckets or different categories. And those buckets or categories are pollinators, predators, detritivores or decomposers, and parasitoids. We'll talk about them in, in depth here. So pollinators, right? Pollinators, some insects can pollinate crops, which are like vegetables and fruits, right? Things we rely on as food, as well as flowers in our backyard. Some of these pollinators also provide us a treat in the form of honey. Um, go ahead and put that name in the chat box. Five, four, three, two, one. Yep, that's right. It's the European honeybee, right? So did you know that every one of every three bites that you take was pollinated by a honeybee? So it's really, really important um, that we protect our honeybees. But other pollinators that we know were things like butterflies and moths and also flies. Mosquitoes are also pollinators to a point. So moving on, detritivores or decomposers. So some of the insects in the insect world are called cleaners. So now, now these are not the type of cleaner when your mom tells you, go clean your room, right? But when their job is, is to help break down organic matter, right? Organic matter was stuff with carbon, was living stuff. So they break down this organic matter in the ground, which includes poop. So all of our detritivores are gonna live in or on the ground. Well, they're really important because we're not overrun with garbage, right? So they help us to break that down and recycle all those good nutrients that were in that organic matter. Some of those insects can be things like beetles and things like millipedes, right? We've had a lot of millipedes lately. So millipedes are a really, really good detritivore. The next one are the predators. I love my predators. So these next two buckets are considered biological control insects. So it's a big word, don't worry about it. Just want you to know that they're biological controls, which means our farmers and us as gardeners and homeowners really like to use biological control. So these are the guys that keep other insects in check. So this very special group um, are sort of the police of the insect world. They keep pest insects or bad insects, right? The bad bugs like aphids and white flies in check. This is really important, especially in agriculture, right? They help, help our farmers keep the bad bugs off their plants so we have food. Bad bugs can be serious pests to many of the vegetable crops, especially things like tomatoes and peppers and watermelons. But first one are predators. So Predators are generalists, right? So that means that they kind of feed on anything that they can come across. Sometimes they actually eat another good insect, right? But that's just kind of the insect world, it happens. But um, they basically feed on anything they can, they can get their hands on. So with predators, a good thing to know is that both the immature, right? The baby stage, um, the larval stage of these insects eat bad bugs as well as the adults eating bad bugs. So 
both stage of these are really good because they all eat bad bugs. So if you see this on your plant, that's really good because you have a larval stage of a lady beetle, right? So praying mantids or praying mantis, these guys are really good. They're called a sit and wait predator. So whatever, they sit and wait and they come along and their front legs are modified to reach out and grasp really quick, right? And pull it in and they start chomping on their prey. So these guys are really, really voracious and really good to have around. Ladybugs and ladybug larvae and lacewing, uh, um, lace, green lacewing are really good predators as well. So ladybugs, as you see here, oh, where's my cursor? She's eating an aphid. Actually, she's eating a lot of aphids. She's really hungry. So um, we think ladybugs are so sweet. They're a beetle, right? They're a lady beetle. We think they're so sweet, but the adult ladybug can actually eat up to 50 aphids a day. And in her lifetime, she can eat up to 5,000 aphids. That's why we call them biological control. Instead of chemical control, right? Instead of having to pay, spray our plants with a, a chemical or a pesticide or an insecticide to get rid of those bad bugs, the biological control is the lady beetle or the lacewing or the praying mantid. And they're really good because then they eat those insects instead of having to use chemicals on them. So the immature stage, this larval stage, she can eat or it can eat up to 400 aphids by the time it goes from, you know, hatching out of an egg to the time it turns to an adult. And then as an adult, she can eat, it can eat another 5,000 uh, of those, those larvae, I'm sorry, of those aphids. So our last bucket, oh, these are cool, kind of gross, but it's cool. These are parasitoids. So parasitoids are normally wasps, but they, are really small and they're really cool. So parasitoids, so this is a parasitoid. They lay eggs inside of a bad insect. So this was an aphid, right? So this, an adult had come along, it pierced this aphid and laid an egg inside that aphid. And so that egg hatched out inside of that aphid. And then it fed on the inside of that aphid and then it pupated, right? The pupal stage is kind of like the cocoon stage. We think of a cocoon as a, uh, a, a moth. I've actually heard of that before about um, a, um, about the wasps just yeah. tearing up the, oh, an, the little insect and putting in the larvae. No, the that's, eggs. that's good I that you heard about that. Second grade Biological control. Wasps. So what they do is that when that, that that pupa stage then becomes an adult, it then cuts a hole in the back of that dead insect and it comes out. Now this adult stage is gonna go around and lay new eggs in other bad insects, right? The other type of parasitoid are things like um, uh, yellow jackets, so ground wasps. So these guys are a little bit bigger. These, this is actually blown up because it, this thing's pretty tiny. This is a big insect. This is, you see these guys, yellow jackets, you see them walking around on the ground. But what they do is they sting mainly caterpillars. They really like caterpillars. So they sting them and paralyze them. But what they do is then they carry that caterpillar back to their nest. So they, they live in the ground, right? So they built their, their nest in the ground and they've laid eggs in there. So they're going to take this caterpillar. They don't want to kill it because they don't want it to go bad. It's only paralyzed. They want it to stay alive. It, take it back and they put it in their nest. So when those eggs hatch out, they then are able to feed on that caterpillar and then they become adults and then they go on and do the same thing. So, so we've covered four buckets of insects, right? We've got our pollinators, they're the insects that help pollinate the food we eat. Our predators, they're the police of the insect world. Detritivores, they're the cleaners of the insect world. They help clean up that organic matter and recycle our nutrients back into the soil including poop, and our parasitoids. So these are special insects that lay eggs inside other bad insects, or they paralyze insects and use as food for their young. So that's kind of an overview of insects. If I told you everything about insects, we would be here for about 3,000 hours. So we can't do that. So this is just kind of an introduction. What? We'd be here for 3,000 hours? Sure. <laughs> so, I said it'd be crazy. What we're going to do now, though, and 
Hope this works. Keep your fingers crossed. We're going to go outside to find insects. Um, so, but before we go outside, um, there are a few items that can be really helpful for you as an investigator. So most insects that we see are really small, or most insects that we don't see are really small. And we don't really know to look for them. So we have some things that will help us to look for those smaller insects. So when you're looking for insects on leaves, it's good to have something called a hand lens. So this is called a hand lens, right? It's just a magnifying glass that's small enough to fit inside your hand. Maybe that's why they call it a hand lens, <laughs> who knows? But for now, if it's the only thing that you have is a magnifying glass right now, that's okay. You can use that. So when you're looking for insects, it's important to know that insects usually like to hide underneath the leaves, right? So they're going to be on the underside of the leaf to basically stay away from predators and also that's where they like to feed and it's a little bit cooler for them. So also if you're looking for insects, um, you also need to look for feeding damage, right? That's kind of how we know where sometimes there's an insect around. So if you have a leaf that's been fed on from the side, you know that you might be looking for a grasshopper or a caterpillar or a weevil of some sort. But if you have some leaves that have some yucky stuff and black stuff on the top and your plant just looks kind of horrible, you might think that that's something that's been, that pierces your, your, your plant and has been sucking the juice from the plant, right? So we'll talk about both of those things when we go outside. Another piece of equipment is something that is really helpful. It's called a butterfly net or an insect net. Um, with this, you can catch flying insects and look at them, but we have to know, we always have to be gentle when we're using a butterfly net because we don't want to injure the insects. We especially don't want to injure our butterflies, right? They're really delicate wings, so you got to be careful. I'll show you how to do a butterfly net, how you do the swoop um, when, you, when you go to catch a butterfly or a bee. Be very careful with those because just know they can sting through that net. We always want to release our insects after we catch them, right? Because we want them to go out and be able to do their job. So when we go outside, I will go on and show you how to properly use the net as well as where you should look for certain insects. So remember the four buckets that we talked about. So with that, let, I'm going to head outside. So I'll meet you on over there, okay? Good job. Let me stop sharing my screen first. <laughs> Thank you, Agent Carol. That was awesome. So we learned so much about the police of the bug world, about the cleanup crew of the bug world, about the pollinators who make food in the bug world. And what's the last one I'm missing? Those parasitoids, right? Not sure what their job is, but they seem a little creepy to me. So thank you, Agent Carol. Now we're going to go to our next The parasitoids, um... They, what they do, they're supposed to pierce through uh, the insect's body and lay their eggs inside of it. Yeah, so. right. Good listening. That's awesome. So we're going to take our next poll. Now the question is, which type of bug would you want to see? I'm going to open our poll. Oops. Just a second. Here we go. Go ahead and vote. Would you want to be a pollinator, a detritivore, slash decomposer, a predator, or a parasitoid? I can't even say it. Para parasitoid. Thank you. <laughs> parasitoid. Oh, a lot of people want to be. Peak to mind as a pollinator, yeah. Thank you for making yeah. our bee. food, everybody. Bee. You want to be a big bee. helpers. I want to be a parasitoid. Bee. Yeah. You want to be a parasitoid. All right, I'm going to end the poll. It looks like pollinators came in first. I'm going to share the results real quick. Look at that. 14 out of you want to be pollinators. Some of you want to be the cleanup crew. Thank you, cleanup crew. And then last, just some of you want to be the predators, the police of the bug world. All right, let's stop sharing this poll, and let's get to Carol, who's waiting outside to show us what exactly you do when you get out there to look for bugs. You don't have to share anything. We're trying to figure out how hey, to Hey, Agent share Abby. Oh, can you see us? Yeah. 
Remember to keep it on speaker view, everybody, and then you can see Carol outside. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, that was that was Agent Katie, <laughs> who she's helping me out because we haven't we haven't figured out how to do this holding with one hand and doing it with the other. So the first thing I told you I wanted to show you was how to use an insect net. Okay. So I'm not going to try to catch anything, but if you if you want to pan up here, you see. I have a lot of flowers and my insect pollinators are just starting to come out. I saw quite a few butterflies a little bit ago, but I think they've moved on to my next, my other plants on the other side. But for an insect nest, you want to do swish, swish, flip. Think about that. Figure, swish, swish, flip, right? So when you're catching something, you're going, oh, there it is. And you go, swish, swish, flip, right? Say it with me. Ready? Swish, swish, flip. So what that's going to do is when I flipped it, it's going to catch whatever I was trying to catch, capture, in the top of that area. So it's going to keep it in there. But I'm going to look at it, right? And then, then I'm going to take and release it and let it fly free, right? That's what's important. We don't want to injure our butterflies or our pollinators or any other, other flying insects. So the next thing I was saying is, okay, we know that we're going to look for pollinators, right? Pollinators are going to be up on flowers. I have some, some um, paper wasps around here, so I got to be careful. But I have a lot of butterflies. I have a lot of moths. I have a lot of beetles out here. So I have a lot of really good pollinators in my yard and honeybees. I have a lot of honeybees because I have a lot of flowers. So it's important to have a real variety of plants in your yard to attract those insects and to help them, right? So the other thing I wanted to show you. So we know pollinators are gonna be up near flowers, right? Well, when we're looking at for things like for grasshoppers and caterpillars, it's kind of hard to see them because they're pretty in the same spot, right? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna look for things like this. Oh my, I have something that's been eating my plant. Look at this, right? So you see all this, this eating damage here? So I know the plant that that came off of, and like this in the middle, this is sometimes a beetle that does this. But you want to look for damage on your plant. And that's how you know that you have an insect of some sort. So this is going to be an insect with a chewing mouth. So you got those. The other thing you want to look for, remember when I said your plants may look just like really yucky, right? May look yucky. You have some black stuff on them. Well, what that is, you come over here. If you see here, I have some black stuff. There we go. Can you see that black stuff? Yeah. Okay. So what that is, is this is called sooty mold. Oh, here's some more. I'll pull it out. So this is called sooty mold. This isn't as bad as it used to be. I don't want to get a, I want to get a bad leaf. Here we go. Oh, there's a bad leaf. See all that black stuff? Well, sooty mold doesn't, it's not an insect. It's a mold. But what happens? Remember I talked about those insects that, that pierce your, your plant and they suck the juice out of it? Well, when they suck the juice out of it, do you know that they poop sugar? It's pretty what? cool. It's called honeydew. So the stuff that they poop out is called honeydew. And it's a sugary, thick, sticky substance. Well, as, they, as they're feeding, that covers the leaves. And then the sooty mold loves honeydew. So this mold then grows on top of that honeydew. So as I look here, I know I have some sort of a piercing, sucking insect, right? But the thing is, you know, people might go, oh, you need to get rid of that because that's a bad bug because piercing sucking insects are bad bugs. But the thing is, this is a really big plant. And you know what? It's got a lot of really good leaves. And do you know I have a lot of ladybugs here? So I don't want to get rid of those insects because that's the food for the ladybugs. They're going to take care of it. If I want to get this sooty mold off, I know how to get it off. It's not a problem. But let me see if I can find some some insects on here because I know I have sooty mold, so I know I must have some insects unless they're already gone. Let 
me see. Oh, here's a good leaf. Here we go. I don't know. If, see, here's the thing. Hard to see. Really hard to see, isn't it? So that's some sort of a scale. That's an insect. But what happens is that that's the insect that's causing the honeydew that's causing that sooty mold. But I can't see it with my eyes. So I got my hand lens. This is going to be the hand lens that you will get in your kit as long as you've come to, to the three programs and you've turned in your, your projects. So this will be part of your package that you get. So I have that or I got a little bit, this is one I have a little, it's a little bit nicer. You know, you might end up, um, if you, if you really get into bug collecting and, and insect hunting, becoming a real investigator, then you might want to upgrade a little bit. Yeah, so right these here. are a little bit higher power, right? But I'm going to put that one in my pocket and I'm going to show you. So when I look, you know, you take this, you go, oh my gosh. And you know what? I got some, I can tell I had some good insects, some parasitoids, because I have an aphid on here that, has that little hole in the back and it's dead. So I also have parasitoids, not only ladybugs that are taking care of my bad insects. So that's another way we find insects. So we've talked about predators, we've talked about pollinators, and now, and we talked about parasitoids, right? Hard to find a parasitoid. Really, really tiny wasps, they fly around, they almost look like gnats. Our last bucket, the tritivores, right? Decomposers, the tritivores, they live in the ground. So, what you can do to find a tritivores, sorry I'm next to my pool equipment, I hope it's okay. What you can do is get a bucket, get a little shovel, have an area that, um, I put this here a couple of days ago, and I'm hoping that the rain was good, but you want an area that might be covered in leaves, right? Organic matter, because that's where they're going to be, they're going to be eating things. Well, I put this here a few days ago, I'm hoping when I pull this up, that I have some detritivores underneath here. So, oh man, and I don't, come on. But um, what you can do is sometimes, oh, yes I do. Let me get this guy. Here's one. What's this guy? Go ahead, tell me. Is that oh. a roly poly? Yep, it's a pill bug. It's a roly poly. So this guy's a really good detritivore. So what you can do is you can go ahead and just scoop up some dirt put it in here um last time we did this man we had a lot of millipedes i had some some beetles but the problem is right here is i have a uh, pool equipment so i might have a, a leak from my pool that is is keeping them away but but basically you want to look through here and a lot of times you're going to find all kinds of detritivores. I mean, you've got some little things that are flying out here. Um, but this is just a good way to find those detritivores is, is find a good area with a lot of organic matter. Like if you see here, there's just a lot of, I have a lot of leaf underneath here, leaf litter. But um, anywhere you can, you can pick apart a piece of wood that's laying on the ground, pick it up. You'll find all kinds of detritivores, including things like termites, right? So that's how you would find the tritivores. So with that, you got a few things you probably have in your garage. You got a bucket, you got a shovel, you got your hands, and you probably have a magnifying glass. So you too, at this moment, can be an investigator. So with that, thank you guys for listening, and we're gonna move on to back to Agent Abby. Thank you much. Thank you, Agent Carol. That was awesome. All right. So we're going to get back to another poll because I want to learn more about the type of bugs you guys like. So give me one second here. All right. So which type of bug would you want to be? We've already answered that question. So let's go to the next one. But before we do, Start from the beginning. Before we do, let's make sure that you understand where you can share your skills. So here's the first opportunity for you to share your skills. You just learned from Agent Carol that you can use the tools. You guys hear that airplane? Pretty loud. 
You can use your tools that you already have, including your hands and your eyeballs, to go outside and investigate bugs. And a plane. And a, yeah. And you can look for those detritivores, and you can look for the pollinators in the parasitoids and the... I forgot the other one. You can look for all those buckets of bugs, and you can showcase those bugs by uploading them to your Dropbox folder. Oh, we don't have another. We have, actually, we're going to extend our skills with Agent Sarah. So Agent Sarah is going to take it away and teach you how you can extend this into a cool experiment. All right. I'm just going to pull up my screen real quick. We have had some interesting conversations in the chat window about sugar and poop. Very interesting facts that we are learning today. Um, hi, my name, my name is Sarah, and I am the uh, 4-H Youth Development Agent. And uh, we are going to talk about some exciting things that you can um, delve in deeper in 4-H um, for this activity. So through 4-H, uh, we focus on uh, hands-on learning. You can join 4-H this summer and develop your outdoor investigator skills. In fact, we actually have a few 4-Hers on the call. Um, this week, we will be delving more in-depth to the world of insects. So let's delve in deep. If you would like to learn more or identify some of the insects you find in your backyard, you can actually check out the Florida Bug Club. It's a website through the University of Florida, and uh, Miss Juliana is going to share that uh, address in the uh, chat window, or I'll make sure I share it after my presentation. But this is a cool website that's been developed by entomologists, expert uh, researchers of insects and other creatures, and they have a bug identification uh, key. So you can use the website to actually identify different insects that you find in your backyard. Just like Agent Carol explained how there was different groups of insects, you know, based on their behavior, uh, like if, if they're a parasitoid or a pollinator, and maybe some of the signs that they live, leave behind, like sugar poop on the leaves that causes the, the sooty mold. Well, you can kind of take all those observations, go to the bug club, and see if you can further identify um, the insects that you find. You want to inspect your insect, take a close look at them, maybe figure out and see if you can find out what that is using the key. There's a couple of different questions that they ask, and you click on the different things based on what you think your insect um, might be. So that's an opportunity if you find some things in your backyard, you can try to figure out yourself what could that um, insect actually be. Have you ever thought about what life is like as an insect or bug? We want you to take a look outside. We want you to think about in, um, the life of an insect. So look for those different signs like Agent Carol discussed in your backyard and you might see life from a different view. Maybe you can imagine yourself from the eyes of an insect and actually um, take a different perspective of your backyard. Have you ever thought what life is like as an insect or a bug? So perhaps you choose your favorite um, insect or fancy creepy crawly. My favorite insect is actually a dragonfly. And I'm, um, but I'm also fascinated with ants. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about ants. And there's an awesome um, ant project that you can do right in your backyard that's pretty easy. So ants are pretty fascinating. They build uh, structures and tunnels. They can carry more than their body weight. They follow scent trails to collect their food. And they build great, amazing structures, like that one that Agent Carol uh, showed the photo of, of that Argentinian ant mound. Wow, 3,000 miles. That's crazy. So if you decide to look at life from the perspective of an ant, maybe you lay down on the ground. Maybe bring a towel. Look up and see what a life is like as an ant. Maybe look at life from the perspective of a dragonfly. Crawl between some trees or uh, some bushes and see what you see. But this week, we are hands-on learning. Calling all scientists, and I know there's a few of you on this call, entomologists, I saw some of you already showcasing those uh, great tools that you have to inspect insects 
and outdoor investigators, it's time for a scientific experiment, something that you can do right in your backyard um, or outside your front door or almost any outdoor surface and put your investigator skills to work. Let's have an ant picnic. So you're gonna actually see what type of ants may crawl up to your picnic and eat a few tiny crumbs. All you need is some index cards, a pencil, and some yummy morsels of food for your ants. Let's see what the ants eat in your backyard. So, like I said, you're going to um, have some index cards. You're gonna choose some uh, food or liquids. Uh, for oils or fats, I use, I'm using some leftover chicken grease and peanut butter. And on another card, uh, you, maybe you put a piece of hot dog or you could use cooking oil. Another uh, way to attract some of the ants to your ant picnic is use a sugary liquid or treat. I'm using um, syrup and a piece of a cookie, but you could um, use some sugar water or some other kind of sweet treat. So you're going to label your index cards. You're going to add just a small amount of food, um, not, larger, not, lar not larger than a quarter, a small amount. And you're going to carefully place your cards outside in an area where there's not too much um, traffic. Wait about an hour, then check back and make your observations. You want to take photos, make drawings, write down what you observe. And you can find some more information at the Florida Bug website, or there's actually a cool website called the Food or the School of Ants. Now let me get to the next slide. So we do want to think about safety, and a few of you already brought that up in the chat window. You definitely don't want to touch bugs that you're not comfortable touching or you know that might sting or um, Get like a fire ant or something like that. So the, to do this experiment, you don't actually have to touch any ants at all. Um, we do have fire ants in Florida, so it's important to take safety precautions and be careful and stand clear of any fire ants. You can observe and do this project from a distance. You can take photos, or if you're really careful, you can inspect closely, a little bit closer, uh, your ants. So just to recap, you're going to get some index cards. You label them. Uh, I labeled them one, two, three, and four, and so I wouldn't forget what I put on each card. I labeled what food. So you can see I put syrup, a little part of a cookie, some peanut butter, and some um, chicken grease. You just add a small amount, and I put them outside on my stone um, patio there uh, so where not too many people walk. So you wait about an hour, and here's my photos from the syrup card. This seemed to be the most popular card that attracted a couple of different kinds of ants. And I actually think there's probably at least two different species because I saw some black ones and I saw uh, some red colored ants. So you guys are gonna try to replicate this experiment, do this experiment, and see what kind of ants are in um, your backyard. The ants in my front yard didn't really seem um, to like the cookie. You can see here on the left that they seem to like the syrup better than the actual sugar cookie. And then the peanut butter didn't seem to work so well. And then my cat stuffed in the peanut butter. So I don't know, that might not have helped either. Um, you can actually see the footprint of the cat um, in the peanut, on my peanut butter um, example. Uh, so they didn't really seem to like the cookie or the peanut butter, but they did like the syrup and they did like uh, the chicken uh, grease. Uh, so um, we wanna know what's gonna happen in your backyard and how many different types of ants you might find. You can record them, you can take pictures of them, and then you can upload it to the Dropbox that Agent Abby was talking about so you can get your investigator uh, kit uh, sent to you. So, um, we want you to share the results of your ant picnic. We want you to take photos, make drawings, or as I mentioned, write up a description of how your ant picnic went. What types of food, what ants did you observe? And you can do it more than once. In fact, I'm gonna try next time another side of my yard, possibly where my cat doesn't walk, so that maybe uh, the um, cards will stay in one place. All right, Agent Abby, it's back to you.
Thank you, Agent Sarah. Great job. So get those ant picnics ready, everybody. We want to see how your ant picnic works. That's your second opportunity to share. You can draw a picture. You can write a summary. You can just take a picture of your ant picnic. However you want to do it, please share it on Dropbox. So we're going to take um, one of our last polls before we go to Agent Jen, who's going to teach us about hand washing. So what bug superpower would you like to have? Would you want to be a Hercules beetle and have strength? So remember it can lift 850 times its own body weight. That's like you lifting seven elephants or several cars or even your school bus of children on the way to school. You could just pick them up and take them. The giant long leg caddy did, invisibility. You could blend in with your environment and never be seen. Or the Atlas moth, you can just fly and flying is awesome. So I'm gonna go ahead and share the poll and you can tell me and everybody else, what superpower would you like to be? I wanna be very All right, so I think a lot of people wanna be invisible. Wow, all right. I thought you'd wanna lift a school bus. Like I, I would wanna lift a school bus. I don't know, it just sounds pretty cool. Like I could just carry kids to school on a yeah, I do. I want to do that. All right. Oh, school. You want to do that. You probably are the one that voted for it because 10 kids want to be invisible, but you're okay. so gorgeous. Don't be invisible. I'm going to end the poll and share the results. Here we go. You can see that most people wanted to be invisible, followed by flying. Totally would love to fly. And then just two people want to be really strong. All right. Awesome job, investigators. Now let's move on to Agent Jen, who's going to share with us a wellness tip. Take it away, Agent Jen. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Agent Jen, and I am so excited to be part of your 4-H Outdoor Investigators. And I am joined here by my son, Reed, who is really digging what you guys are learning about. Um, and I do have to say off topic, I found on my swamp milkweed this morning, six caterpillars. And um, that was pretty cool. So I know that Agent Carol would be very excited about that because they're monarch caterpillars and they're extraordinary, extraordinarily beautiful. But regardless, that's not what I'm here to talk about today. What Reed and I are here to talk about today is taking a step back inside to learn about hand washing safety. And I know many of you have heard about this before, but do you know how many steps there actually are in correct hand washing safety? Does anybody know? Well, I know a lot of you are muted, but there are one, two, three, four, five steps and we're going to demonstrate those real quick because it's super important right now to make sure we're washing our hands and being safe right because the way that we transfer germs and viruses is usually on our hands so it's important to bathe and wash our hands and keep ourselves and our families and our pets safe and if you're going to be looking at all these insects well it's your job to be safe with your hands as well right so Reed's going to demonstrate, we're actually in our kitchen today because it was the best place for us to join you, but we're going to go ahead and start the first step of hand washing safety, which is what? What do you think the first step would be? What do you think, Reed? So the first step to washing your hands the correct, correct way is you rinse your hands with running water. So, and then I, let, I have this routine that I do for like 20 seconds. I go my inside palms like this and then go out my outside hands, go in between my fingers, in my fingernails, and then I do it again, palms, outside hand, in between my fingers, nails, and then I do outside again, and then I'm done. Great. So Reed kind of gave away the secret, or not the secret, but the answer I was going to ask you is how long do you scrub your hands, you know, with the soap? Do you know how many seconds 
You are supposed to scrub your hands. Anyone? 20 seconds. Oh, that is very, very good. And I don't know who said that because I've got so many amazing faces right now. But um, 20 seconds is correct. And there are a couple songs that I'm sure you've learned about that are actually about 20 seconds long. And one of them is Happy Birthday. Row, row, row your boat is another one. So if you sing those to yourself, ABCs is another one. If you sing those to yourself twice, that will give you your 20 seconds. But Reed likes to have this routine because then he feels like he does the same thing and he knows that it's, you know, the 20 seconds. And plus, I don't know if he really likes singing in front of everybody. So he may just do it in his head, regardless. So now that he's scrubbed for 20 seconds, and it's been more than that because I'm talking, right? But he's scrubbed for 20 seconds. The next step is, and that was step three, by the way, right? Um, I'm sorry, step two. The next step is what, Reed? Um, the next step is rinse your hands out very thoroughly. Mm -hmm. That's step four. Three. And then step five is get two paper towels, take one, and this is what he's demonstrating to you is when you're in a public bathroom, okay? And then we're going to tell you the difference that may be what you do in your home, kitchen, or bathroom. So the first thing he's telling you is about single-use paper towels. So what are you doing, Reed? You take your first paper towel and you dry your hands very well. And then you take your second paper towel and... Wipe the knob of your um, sink. And how do you, why do you use the paper towel reed to um, turn off the water or to uh, wipe the knob of the sink? Why do you use the paper towel and not your hands? Because if you use your hand, then you just get the germs that were already on the knob on your hand again. Right? So that's very important, especially when you're in a public bathroom, because if you just did all of those steps, turning the water on, putting soap on your hands, scrubbing your hands, rinsing your hands, and then you touch a dirty handle or the door to the bathroom, you've basically just recontaminated your hands. So that's why we always suggest the paper towel. Now at home, your family may have, like we do, a dishcloth, right? And that's okay at home because you all live together and, and that's your, you're basically sharing your own cooties, if you will. But that's okay, because that's family cooties. But outside, it's a little different. So especially if you ever go into a restaurant or a, um, a place that they serve food, they always have paper towels because it's single use. You use that paper towel and then you throw it away. So it's very important because that keeps you safe from getting other folks' germs. So I just wanted to demonstrate those procedures, those steps for washing your hands, remember, we turn the water on, we get our hands wet, we add soap, we scrub for 20 seconds, we dry our hands with either a family towel or a single use paper towel, and then we are good to go. And that is so important, especially during these times to keep yourself safe. But when you're at home, you want to do it after being outside or looking for bugs, right? You wanna do it after playing with your pet or giving your pet a treat or feeding your pet. I saw a lot of people talking about sugar poop. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't poop sugar. But when I do poop, I wash my hands afterwards. So remember all of you guys to wash your hands after you go to the bathroom, before you eat, before preparing food, right? All of those things and after potentially touching your face or your arms or your legs or anything maybe icky or slimy, right? So I hope you guys enjoyed that and we challenge you, Reed and I challenge you to show us and to show Agent Carol and Agent Sarah and Agent Jamie, I'm sorry, not Jamie, Abby, oh my gosh, that's her sister's name, my fault, um, to, how, to show us the creative ways that you are washing your hands at home and um, report back to us so we can share those with other folks just like you guys. So enjoy yourself. Um, 
Thank you for participating. And it's so good to see so many smiling faces out there in 4-H investigator world. Thank you, Agent Jen and Special sure. Assistant Reed. You guys were awesome. So let's, I'm gonna do one last poll and unfortunately we're not gonna get a lot of time or we have no time to talk to each other, but next week we're gonna talk to each other. But this time I wanna know, do you sing a song when you wash your hands? So I'm gonna go ahead and share that poll because I wanna know if you're singing. <laughs> Maybe you're singing in your head. I don't know. So the options are yes. I always sing, yes, sometimes I sing, no, I do something else to pass the time when I'm washing my hands, or no, I just wash. I do nothing else but wash. So I'm seeing some good results coming in. I see that sometimes people sing, some people do other things to pass the time. I hope that you'll share with us what you do, and some people just watch, wash. I'm gonna share those results. So you can see that seven people just wash. I hope that maybe now you'll be challenged to do something creative and share it with us. Maybe you want to do a rap. Maybe you want to do a little dance. Maybe you want to sing a new song, make up a song about washing your hands. I don't know, but I hope that you'll share it with us. So that's your third way of sharing. You can write a poem, you can sing a song, you can do a dance, you can create anything that you want that's 20 seconds long that will help you and others wash their hands properly, just like Reed showed us. So I wish it was small group time, but unfortunately we're out of time. So just to make sure to become an investigator, you're going to participate next week and the following week, and you're gonna share three items. Today you had three chances to share. You don't have to choose all those. You can choose one today, one next week, and one the following week. So again, those three opportunities to share are, show us what you do outside when you investigate bugs. You can also create that ant picnic, and then show us what you did. And then finally, create something new when you wash your hands and share it with us. Don't forget that the registered person is, needs to check their email. With that email will be information on the Dropbox and how to use the Dropbox, and also a reminder of the three ways to share. So thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much to Agent Carol, our bug expert. Thank you, Agent Sarah, for extending the lesson and teaching us about an ant picnic and the UF Bug Club. Thank you, Agent Jen, I'm not sure why it says Maria. I guess I'm getting you back. And uh, Reed, the special assistant. And don't forget, thank you guys for showing up. You guys were a great audience. Next time, I promise you're going to have an opportunity to talk so that we can get out all of our knowledge and all of our information that we have bottled up inside, okay? So if you, I wanted to make sure before we go, if there's any burning questions, we can answer those, and if you're done, you can go ahead and hang up, but if you want to stay and ask a question, please do. I know there was some questions about millipedes earlier. Is Agent Carol still around? Yeah, I'm here. If, if they're arthropods or if they're actual insects? They're an arthropod. Okay, then. I can't remember if that was Jabba the Hutt or one of the other Yeah, I think it, I, yeah, it was Jabba, yeah, yeah, it was Jabba the Hutt that said that. that they are awesome ones. Do you guys have other questions? Um, Adeline had one question. Um, hey, Adeline. Um, the male ants, um, how do um, they not feed themselves? Because if we don't feed ourselves, we'll die. The other ants feed them. They actually, the other ants eat the food and then they regurgitate it. And then they feed the, the male ants that way. Ooh. Called prophylaxis. That's a There's a big name basically for, for puking up food and letting somebody else eat it. Ooh. You said <laughs> that in the dinner. chat window? I want to know how to spell that. <laughs> <laughs> Delicious. What are we having for dinner tonight? Trophylaxis. <laughs> Yay. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions, guys? All right. Well, thank you so much for joining. You guys rock. I can't wait to see what you come up with. I can't wait thank to you. see the bugs you find and your ant picnic and the way you wash your hands. Have a thank good day, everybody. You. Thank you, guys. You're fabulous. Thanks for coming. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Great to see you all. Bye.